Lift your head down, your cup in your hand, and uh, lift the left arm up to the sky. Make a decision as to what you are thinking and what you want. And then choose the largest thing that is available. Can you think up to that? Think big. Up to that. Up to that. Essentially, I just want to demonstrate. When you're looking down, the ear can up. We know that uh, the lateral one-third of the um, canal is cartilaginous, not muscle, and then the medial two thirds is bone. So you need to elevate the canal, stay calm, there's a natural compression of the canal through the cerebrum, and then you choose to have lift it up to the sky and up to the feet, and be right there at eye level, and think big. If you've got a nice broad specula, it will illuminate a wider area Also, if you have a narrow, small specimen like this, you're going to tend to have to maneuver the specimen around. You want to look at the top part of your trunk and go, okay, am I getting up there? What's the bottom part of the trunk doing now? Every time you wiggle the specimen around, you're going to be banging on it with the foot. And that's what you're looking at. You're looking to adhere to it. Now, what you're looking to do is make it more stronger as a shim. So a shim is a hair on the top of your ear stomach and it's going to cause you to have some pain. So as you are wiggling it around, I suggest that you think big and think of the wider elevation of this canal. So the choice of specimen is is this. And uh, as you did, and uh, also they turn on and off depending on where you're standing at that time. We tell people to turn it on. That's how the phone works and that's what we use it now for our Navigation system. All right, so when you're examining the ear, it's important that you start small. Looking at the top, stop up to the frequency you want to look at. Okay, so let's say B, where we're looking at our back of the ear. Now, up to the back of your ear. got some pictures now. All right, so can you all see this is what a normal eardrum looks like? Can you then work out if you, you are looking at essentially thin cast iron, you see the thin cast through the eardrum, this is a, a round ear,
and the midline is is this thing here. So if you play this, and these are for your front wheel, if you play the front front wheel, this is the sort of front wing stability. There is also a fixed wing system in this car as well. Um, so when you're using these special lenses, please gently lift the front or top of the handset and get a good view of the performance of the car. And then you can go around it. These are all done by hand. Um, there are other ones. Let's go back. Take your top of this wing up here uh, with your midline fine. Looking down on that, that's how the view looks as well. So I will show it to you. These are um, basically the pulley mechanisms here. So very useful for lean and prone bodies. Um, you'll see that they are angled, so your hand is away from the alarm or steering wheel. So again, with your midline fine, you can take the rotor and place it over this wheel. going back to the rear, another interesting midline system is the pulley system that comes up in the rear. Also very useful, also angled away for your hand and also for um, special lenses. You will see that you just place this thing on the wheel and away it goes. Um, okay, so when you're looking down here at the top of these, as you know, these are not fully angled. So these are lower. Thing. So, 
this year. But just to give you an idea of how the principal works,
just going to show you, why don't you, little tricks. If you turn your mouse over here, I think if you guys could all come and just stand on this side, if we don't mind. Headlamp and examining the the ear. So you guys are going to be really comfortable and staying in this position for for hundreds of hours of work. So you need to make sure that you're comfortable and you're looking after yourself um, and that you're taking comfortable showers and you should be staying here for a long time. All right. So when looking at the the ears, you're going to assess the symmetry on both sides. And you can see how the ear walls look, look normal. They are from this left ear, visible and uh, available for examination. And looking at the other side, mouth at the right, without feeling like you're trying to turn it around, you're going to make sure it's looking at the right side of you. And you can proceed. So when uh, examining your ear with your headlamp, I want you all to inspect behind the ear. Make sure they watch the ear now. So I'm looking for scars, sinuses, this is a macular bone in the inner cheek, a type of medial that extends to the macular ulcer. You frequently get swelling and uh, um, pain and that sort of thing. With your two hands, right hand gently lifts the pinna upwards and backwards. Left hand uh, will touch the, the pelvis forward. Then move your head around and shine the light up. Everyone's got different angles here for now. You can gently move the head, patient's head around. So I put this head away, and just with my headlamp, I can look right the way down the ear canal. I can see the tympanic membrane. So just using the headlamp and the naked eye, you can make an assessment of the ear canal. You can make an assessment of the tympanic membrane. There is no um, movement of any inflammation on the ear canal. There's no ear movement. The tympanic membrane is normal. And that's just using the headlamp. And then the same again on the other side. All right, so I want you guys to practice moving the patient's head around and getting the, um, the visualization of the tympanic membrane. Now I know what my patient can see. Now he's got a pretty nice tympanic membrane. People hold the otoscope in different ways. Um, practice and learn which way is best for you. Uh, another good trick is to look at the people from the eye examine the patient's eyes, don't be shy, ask them the degree of tympanic fatigue. So let's say it was a child and you punch from your chest and my whole hand moves away, this hand just doesn't go, it gets stuck down here and that's the reason why this is very painful and that one is very good. So again, I hold the pneumatic bulb in my right hand, looking at the eye, um, pick up the pinna gently upwards and backwards and then with the um, speculum, Pull the pelvis forward, look down, and then visualize as you go down into the ear canal and look around and see healthy things and tears that come out of the ear canal. All right. So those are the things that you want to to practice. I'll be teaching in a demonstration today, the examination of the neck. Um, it's best to stand behind the patient so that you can help patients evenly and you're also just thinking in your mind what you're feeling as you're coming along the floor of the mouth down sternocleidomastoid down to the clavicles along the clavicles posterior triangle up the trapezius over the posterior triangle then palpation the anterior trapezius all the instruments, practice your headlamp, uh, otoscope, tuning fork, looking in the nose if you know it, 